name is Charles Desmond. I chair the Board of Higher Education. And for the, everyone here from the higher education community, I want to hear a very large noise from higher education. Okay, wait, 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 wait a minute. No, 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 that is unacceptable. I said a loud noise from higher education. Okay. Now, next thing, I want everyone to look, look at what I have in my hand. This is a iPhone. I have taken a video of everyone that's in this room today. Why did I take that video? Because this is a historic moment and everyone in the state is going to say they were here today when they're going to be lying and I get the evidence. So, we've got We've got the leadership in the room today. We've got students from every corner of the state of Massachusetts. We've got elected officials. We've got politicians. I mean, yeah, elected officials are politicians. We have leaders from government. <laughs> no, there's, sometimes there's a little difference, but we've got leadership in our elected officials today. We've got people from the private sector, from all across the Commonwealth. Union leadership that's in the House today. All of us. Okay. We are united in believing that public education is the best investment we can make in the future of the Commonwealth. Our job is to make sure that everyone understands that and that we persuasively <laughs> communicate our message to everyone who needs to hear it and needs to join with us in this campaign. So today is going to be a very, very big day. Believe that. Believe in yourselves and get out there and represent your schools, your institutions, your communities, your families, everybody in the Commonwealth. We began public education in the Commonwealth and we're going to take it to the nation that this is the leader in the country for public education. All right. My next job, my next job is to introduce the, the young gentleman that's sitting to my left. Angel Donahue Rodriguez is the representative to the Board of Higher Education. He is a senior at Salem State University. He has vision, he has leadership, he has integrity, he's an intellect, and he, he is someone who, when I look to students across the Commonwealth, I look to him and I say, this is what's coming in the pipeline. Students like Angel, students like Michael, who was representing on the board last year. Every time one of our institutions sends, sends a student, they stand stronger and more powerful than the student that came before them. So we are honored to have Angel Donahue Rodriguez speaking for you all. Thank you, Chair Desmond. Good morning, everyone. A little louder. That wasn't loud enough. Again, come on. Good morning. That was weak. Again, come on. Good morning. Good morning. What? What is this? Welcome to Public Higher Education Advocacy Day. I would like to thank all of you for coming, and I would like to thank our legislators and their staff that are here today. Today marks a significant moment in public higher education in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. For the first time in recent memory, all three segments are coming together around a united cause. We are not here as UMass, the community colleges or state universities, but as students united from Massachusetts public higher education from all 29 campuses. If you're here from the community colleges, please stand up. If you're here from the community colleges, please stand up. If you're here from the state universities, please stand up. If you're here from the University of Massachusetts, please stand up. We are all united around the promotion of accessibility, affordability, and the belief 
that in order to win the future, we need an education. Most importantly today, isn't just advocating for the causes that we feel are important. It's about who we advocate for. It's the single mother struggling, trying to provide for their children and trying to attend class at the same time. It's about those first generation students trying to make their families proud as they walk through commencement. But we're also here for our alumni that are drowning in student debt and cannot seem to find a job. We were told that education would lead to a brighter future. But instead, for far too many of us, we find ourselves in uncertainty. As a nation, for the first time, we have crossed the $1 trillion mark for outstanding loans for students. We are here to say today, this is crazy. This is no way. This is no way to build economic security in the United States of America. And I know that President Obama and Governor Patrick would agree with here with me on this. But because of people like you, we are building a foundation to a bridge to the other side. What is on that other side? That other side is opportunity. The ability to forge the future that we desire through an education. We are here building a foundation to get to the other side. It's going to take time and it's a lengthy process. But believe me when I tell you, we will get there. We will get there if we stay here united. Thank you. Now it is my great privilege to introduce two great champions of public higher education in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The co-chairs of the Legislature's Joint Committee on Higher Education, Senators Michael Moore and Representative Tom Sanicandro. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Can everyone hear me okay? Well, good morning. I want to welcome you to the State House today for Public Higher Education Day. It's great to see all sectors of public higher education joined here together. Your voices are much stronger when you come together with, with a unified message stating we support public higher education in Massachusetts. A college degree today has become a necessity in this competitive 21st century economy and our public higher education system stands ready to deliver you. Massachusetts is a, is a shining example of the necessity for a stronger public higher education institution. Students both nationally and internationally come to Massachusetts each year to learn in our colleges and universities, making our higher education institutions some of the Commonwealth's greatest resources. We have over 29 campuses throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts delivering public higher education and it educates over 200,000 students each year. These public institutions of higher learning are crucial to the stability and well-being of the Commonwealth's economy. The research and learning taking place on the campuses of the state colleges and universities throughout the Commonwealth has served as the foundation for many of Massachusetts' leading industries, such as the biomedical industry. These institutions also bring to Massachusetts new and innovative ideas and skills throughout, through partnerships with businesses and graduates entering the workforce. Each attract many businesses to come and establish themselves in the Commonwealth to gain from these valuable resources. Today, as you visit your various legislative offices, tell your story to your legislators and their staff members and express the importance and impact of your public higher education and, ha and its impact on you. Remember, no one's going to advocate for you. You must advocate for yourself. So I look forward to seeing you all here today, and good luck. And, we, and I know we'll be supporting your um, funding initiatives throughout this legislative session. So thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm, good morning. That was almost as good as when Angel did it. Um, 
Good morning, everybody. I'm State Representative Tom Sanicandro, and I'm here to welcome you to the People's House. You are now in the People's House. This is your State House. We are your representatives. We work for you in this process. That's why we're here. And we want you to tell your stories when you come out and talk to us today. The stories that you tell us and the stories that you tell to our aides and staff people, know that those stories don't end with that person. Those stories will be retold throughout the building among the legislators and among the staff, and they can make a huge difference. How many folks are in public higher education in this room? Good crowd, good crowd. The doors of opportunity have been open to you. They've been open to you personally, and your future is wide open at this point, and you have potential that is now you're starting to meet. The issue that we have here is how do we continue to provide this potential? You're not here only advocating for yourselves in your own education. You're advocating for your families in your future education, and you're advocating for the future of Massachusetts. We don't have oil in Massachusetts. We don't have gold in Massachusetts. All we have is brain power, and that's you. That's why companies come here. That's why the future is you here in Massachusetts. So we need you in Massachusetts, and we need your advocacy here on the Hill. We're, we're going to do what we can in the budget, but we need your voices so it'll make us easier to do our job. So thank you all for being here, and good luck. All right. Thank you, Senator Moore and Representative Sanicandro. Now I'd like to welcome Education, uh, Education Secretary Paul Revel and Commissioner Richard Freeland. Thank you, Angel, and welcome to all of you uh, who've joined us here today. It's so impressive to see so many young people coming out. You know, we hear a lot of talk about apathy in civic affairs and young people not caring about whether, where the future is headed. And I want to add my voice to those of our colleagues in the legislature and to our, our uh, outstanding chairman of the Board of Higher Education, Charlie Desmond. Commissioner Freeland and all the others who will follow me in welcoming you here today and to say not only do we need your voices and not only do we need your advocacy, but to, to take a step further what uh, Chairman Sanicandro talked about is we need your thinking. Public higher education represents uh, the quality of intellect and improving the quality of the way in which we think and work on civic affairs. Here on Beacon Hill, we're number one on a hill, we're easy targets but we're also trying to solve problems. And we're trying to solve problems about what's, what kind of society do we want to be? And what do we do with the resources that taxpayers give us? And how do we make the case more generally to the public about the kind of society we want to be and what we want to do for one another, which is what we do through government, and how we allocate the scarce resources that we have and how we cope with difficult times and brain power is not only needed to grow jobs, that's an important part of what we must do in the future, but brain power is needed to help us solve the civic challenges of our time. And one of the civic challenges of our time is how we make public higher education affordable and of high quality and accessible to all the residents in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's the problem that we work on day in and day out, and there are no easy answers, or you wouldn't be here today. We would have solved it a long time ago. So we need your help in thinking this through. Governor Patrick would love to have been with you here today and was not able to be here, but he asked me to convey his welcome and his eagerness to have your participation in this dialogue. He and we in this administration have worked as hard as we possibly can to prioritize public higher education, notwithstanding uh, the worst economic crisis since the Depression that we've been through over the past four years. We've made some substantial progress. And we're proud of that. We're proud of 
uh, what we've done in, in public higher education in the past year, even though we know it's nowhere near adequate to what we should be doing, to what we want to do, but we've been able to put a marker out there and, and hopefully work in the future toward improving things. While we work on the problem of financing public higher education, which we will be doing in the next year in a variety of ways and means, we also need to work on the challenge of improving public higher education in a variety of ways. So we look to your help on that as well. And my suspicion is, as often happens in this building, the two are coupled together. When we talk about asking the citizens of the Commonwealth to refinance, which is in effect what we need to do, public higher education, we also need to talk about how we're going to strengthen that system of public higher education. And on both counts, we need your help going forward. So I look forward to our continuing conversation. I look forward to our continuing partnership. I look forward to hearing from you today. And now our Commissioner of Higher Education, Richard Friedman. I have to tell you, it is wonderful to look out and see students and faculty, union and presidents, every one of our segments in public higher We need unity in public higher education and to see this kind of turnout from all parts of public higher education, this is where our power is. Thank you all for being here and thank you for being part of it. I would just ask you to remember three things uh, in the course of this day. Number one, you have friends on Beacon Hill. You are welcome uh, in this house. You've heard from the House and Senate co-chairs of the Higher Education Committee. You have friends in the legislature. They are receptive to your message. You've heard from Secretary Revel. The governor is on your side. We have an education governor. We have the strongest educational govern governor we have had in recent memory. So people here are receptive to your message. Number two, this is a tough time for the legislature. It's not easy to find money. Uh, it's not easy to move money around and increase support for public higher education. It's important to remember as you talk with our legislators that they face very difficult choices in a painful and hard time in this country. So strongly as we feel about our cause, remember they have a difficult job to do. But number three, this message is very, very important. We need low-cost, affordable, high-quality, first-class public higher education in this state and all across the country. I grew up in a country that believed in high quality, low cost public higher education. And in the last 20 years, all across the country, we have started to walk away from that commitment and that value. And we have been shifting the cost of paying for public higher education all across the country, from state governments to students. You know that, and I know that. We must reverse that pattern, and your voice is here today to say it is vital for this state and it is vital for this country to, to, to turn that, that pattern around and reassert this fundamental truth and fact about American democracy and about Ma Massachusetts democracy. We don't have a future without low-cost, high-quality public higher education in this state. We're here to work with the state government to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Revel and Commissioner Freeland. Now, please welcome Nicole Collins from Bristol Community College. Good morning, everybody. Um, as I said, my name is Nicole Collins, and I am president of the Student Senate at Bristol Community College. I'm a 23-year-old mother I'm also a first-generation college student and the first of the six of my brothers and sisters that are college age to go to actually go to college. When I first started at BCC, my main focus was to do my two years 
wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, get it done, and just get a job as fast as I could. Um, but it's because of the people that we have at Bristol Community College and the sense of community that we have at the college that I began to dream bigger. And like many other students, we start thinking past work, first development, and start focusing on transfer and how that really is going to change our lives. One of the things that I wanted to mention was how important it is for funding for public higher education. Um, as a student, I am planning on transferring. I'll be graduating this spring. And I plan on uh, sorry, pursuing a career um, as a veterinarian. So how important it is to really get all of my math, all of my science down at Bristol Community College while I'm there. Um, with not enough funding, it's very hard to maintain the level of enrollment that we have at Bristol Community College. And as our numbers grow, we have more and more students going into these math and science fields. And it's important that we're able to accommodate all of them and make sure that they can take their classes and they're not being have forced to wait another year in order to get into certain classes. So basically, sorry. I just kind of wanted to talk about the sense of community that we do have at the college and how important it is for us to stay a community college and, I'm sorry you guys, I lost my speech before this. <laughs> my, last, my last little piece is that I think we definitely need more funding for our higher education and as a community college we shouldn't have to compromise our mission and our goals in order to get that funding. And I just want to thank you guys all for giving me the opportunity to speak in front of you. And um, have enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate you coming here and to share your story. Now I'd like to introduce Melanie Mulvey from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I'm here today at Lobby Day as a graduating senior from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. <laughs> While the changes we make here today won't affect me directly, I'm here because I love my university and I love my state and I want future students to enjoy the same opportunities that I've had over the last four years. Public education works. I know, I grew up maybe seven stops from here down the red line in Dorchester, a working class community. <laughs> a working class community where going to college is far from a guarantee. But thanks to the support and hard work of my family, my teachers, and my community, I was able to receive a first class education at one of the nation's most successful public schools, Boston Latin School. And now, and now here I am, a kid from Dorchester, born to a 21-year-old single mother on welfare, and I'm two months from graduating. I've been able to achieve things that my mother could only dream of, and now I'm poised to contribute to my community and to my state in a meaningful way. Public education works, but it needs support. Since I've been at UMass, I've spent my entire college career trying to outrun budget cuts that threatened every program I've participated in. You know. <laughs> The Institute for International Public Policy was cut from the federal budget earlier this year, and now hundreds of students just like me won't have the opportunity that I had to study abroad, to learn another language and another culture. I was also funded by the International Programs Office at UMass. 
but with scholarships for these types of opportunities are on the chopping block. And these programs are not luxuries. We need international programs to keep us competitive in today's job market. <laughs> Costs are rising, budgets are shrinking, and it's getting harder and harder for students to cover the cost of their education. Grants and scholarships are vanishing, but incomes aren't increasing. But this we know. Higher education funding is the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> service to students begets service to our universities and to our communities. We're here today, each of us, not just as students, but as constituents each with a unique story to share. Share it. Share it with your legislators, not just for yourselves, but for future students and for the future of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Before we head off, I got one more speaker for you guys. <sighs> A word from my fellow board member, president of the Massachusetts Teacher Association, president and our faculty, please welcome Paul Toner. Thank you very much, Angel. I, I, I just have to applaud the students especially for being up here and the, uh, the comments you've made are just uh, on point. They're fantastic and the stories you have told are inspiring to me and I hope that every one of you will share your inspiring stories today because that is why we're here. Uh, as Angel said, I'm Paul Toner. I'm president of the Massachusetts Teachers Association and I represent most of the faculty and staff on your community colleges, universities, and state universities, and I know we have some AFT folks uh, in the audience as well and some of the other unions. And your, uh, pr your professors and the staff on your campuses are here to support you, and I want to thank you for being here to support them. We are in this together. Uh, we can't have great universities and coll community colleges without great faculty and staff, and we can't uh, do what we need to do for our students without the, the proper supports and the funding. Uh, I do want to also just say that as a member of the Board of Higher Ed, my voice is to be there for, as a voice of labor. However, I am a product of the UMass Boston School of Education where I got my master's degree. So, thank you. As an alum, and uh, also I am also the father of two young children in the Cambridge public school systems, and I certainly expect that they will be taking advantage of our public higher education system in the future, as my brothers and I, I did as well. Uh, I do want to just say that as we're here today, uh, as Commissioner Freeland said, we do want to be polite and respectful to our great senators and state representatives. They do have a hard job to do here at the uh, legislature, but we do have to ask them to start showing the leadership that I know that they can show. We have to talk about revenue. We can't do anything here without talking about revenue. And uh, it's not just public higher education. There are many issues we have to face here in the Commonwealth. We're here to focus on public higher education. We're here to do our job today. I hope you'll go forth and share your stories and the facts uh, uh, from your campuses. But we also have to start talking about revenue. And one last th thank you. Uh, one last thing is, we're here for one day of the year. This is going to take constant advocacy. You can't leave here thinking you did your job. You're going to have to go back to your campuses and your homes and talk to your fellow students, your colleagues in the workplace, and your uh, folks in the neighborhoods about the need to get behind and support public higher education in Massachusetts. And for those of you who are the techies in the room, I, I'm, I'm slightly, but uh, my communication staff tells me if you're tweeting, please use hashtag advocate for the number four, P-H-E, and get the word out to uh, all of your friends and colleagues on Twitter. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.